Okay, welcome everybody to our uh, recorded worship service. Pleased to have you join us for this week's lesson. Uh, also know that on uh, this first service we'll be having Holy Communion. So if you have some bread or uh, grape juice or wine, uh, you can also participate in your own homes uh, as we uh, bless the elements and then you uh, participate in your own homes. Also know that we have a, a fellowship time uh, from 10 10.30 to 11.30 on Sunday mornings, uh, a Zoom fellowship time, and please join us for that, where we'll be talking about our friendships over the years uh, on this particular time together. I also know that I'm going to be starting a class in uh, September, the second and fourth Saturdays from 8.30 to 10, which is going to be a book study um, called uh, Waking Up White by uh, Debbie Irving, uh, who we'll be discussing and we'll talk about our own uh, ways that we've been raised, raised in um, not really knowing how we have um, prejudice and, and things that are a part of our lives that, uh, I, again, I was just so amazed that you just don't think about these things. Uh, and that she draws it to our attention. It's a great discussion kind of uh, book study that we're going to have. service then with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, We Are All One in Christ.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son that we may gladly minister to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah. Listen to me, you that have purpose, righteousness. You that seek the Lord, look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all of her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation. For a teaching will go out from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands will wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. Sing Psalm 138 responsibly. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name. Because of your steadfast love and faithfulness, for you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called you, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yes, and cares yes. for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your promise before me. O Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Glory, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is from Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For, the, for by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, in ministering the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do the people say the Son of Man is? And they said, 
Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So, I'm excited. I've been looking at the last five Sundays, and all those messages have a thread that runs through all of them. Not only the messages on Sunday morning, but also the messages that are between them and tie them together. And that thread that ties them all together is the Jewish-Gentile um, issue that's ha happening uh, so strongly for Jesus at this time with the uh, prejudice that is there uh, among Jews towards Gentiles. And it all starts back in our time when Jesus tells the parables of the kingdom. And one of those parables, the very, a very small one, is a parable of the yeast, that it takes a little bit of yeast and it permeates the whole batch. And at that time I talked too about how Jesus is making sure that we realize that there's no barriers, that uh, what he has to provide for them in his word is meant for everybody. Uh, then after that comes the feeding of the 5,000. And at that time, I also mentioned to, the, to you that it is kind of strange that there's a lot of eating regulations when it comes to the Jews, particularly when it comes to Gentiles. And yet Jesus and his disciples don't wash their hands or provide any means by which the people there can wash their hands, nor does he um, worry about the Gentile Jewish uh, divisions that they're eating together at that time, which is all against the law. Then comes the time when Jesus goes up the uh, mountains to pray, and the disciples go on their boat, and uh, then they uh, have this great storm, and Jesus walks on the water, um, and there is a storm coming. Uh, because of all these things that are happening with Jesus in relationship to these crowds, um, there is going to be a real confrontation between the religious leaders. And that's what happens. Jesus is able to walk in the storms, but the storms happen. So when the disciples finally get back to land, they're confronted by Pharisees and scribes who ask Jesus why it is true that his disciples do not wash their hands. And last week, I think I also told you that that washing of hands isn't a hygiene issue. It's rather a holiness issue. You have to wash your hands ceremonially, ceremonially so that you can wash the stain of the world away, particularly the Gentile world. Uh, then comes um, our lesson for last week, which is a direct uh, Jesus confronting this issue of the Gentiles. Because there is a Canaanite woman who comes to Jesus and uh, wants her daughter healed of a demon. And uh, Jesus calls her a dog, but I mentioned to, to you all that uh, under this context, for her to be a dog is better than being a Gentile. Because being a Gentile meant that you can't eat with Jews, and Jews could eat with their dogs. And also, it's a compliment in that dogs are so faithful. And last week we talked about it, uh, our pets in uh, our fellowship time. Cats are also faithful. Uh, so just to give them equal footing. But the fact is that for Jesus to label this woman as a dog is in this context a compliment because of the great faith of a dog. This woman is also showing her faith, and uh, a faith that is greater than any of the Jews around him. Then comes our lesson for today, but in between comes, first of all, Jesus feeding another group of thousands of people. He first of all has this healing. Um, those who are lame are able to walk again. Those who are deaf are able to hear again. Those who can't see are able to see again. And Jesus is with this crowd of people for three days. And he doesn't want to send them away without eating. And so again, he asks this time, how many fish do you have? How, many, how much bread do you have to the disciples? 
Disciples under this context say they have seven loaves of bread, not the five of the first time, and some fish, not the two fish that were a part of the first uh, feeding of the 5,000. And so Jesus takes this seven loaves and some fish and blesses them, passes them out through his disciples to the crowd. And this time there's 4,000 people that are, are uh, offered this food. And there's seven baskets left over, not the 12 of before. So they're very different healing stories. Some people, scholars thought, well, it's just repeating the same story. It's not repeating the same story. Jesus is really putting it in the face of the Pharisees that he's going to continue to do what he needs to do to bring people together and not separate them. So there's a feeding of the, the 4,000. Then once again, Pharisees confront Jesus. Only they don't confront him uh, in the way you might imagine. They want Jesus to do a sign for them. And I think this is kind of almost humorous. I mean, they don't, they're against Jesus, but they would love to have some of his miracles in their hip pocket. And so uh, he wants, uh, uh, the Pharisees want Jesus to perform for them. But Jesus refuses. He says that the only sign I will give to the Pharisees is the sign of Jonah. And then he goes on to talk to disciples privately, and he tells them, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees. So before, he was talking about how the yeast of the kingdom of God is there. It permeates all things. Now Jesus is saying the yeast of the Pharisees is here. It's a bad yeast, and it also is going to permeate the whole of culture, and we have to uh, be warned against it. Then comes our lesson for today. And our lesson for today has uh, Jesus asked the disciples, who do the people say that I am? And uh, the disciples say, well, some say you're John the Baptist, raised from the dead. Some say you're Elijah. Uh, some say you're Jeremiah or one of the prophets of old. And then Jesus asked the most important question any of us can be asked by Jesus. Who do you say that I am? And Peter says, you are the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus says, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. Or in another version, it's Simon bar Jonah, which means son of Jonah. Uh, for, God, for, the, um, for God has revealed this to you, my Father in heaven. And blessed are you, Peter, for upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And anything you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, anything you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So what does Jesus call Peter after this great declaration of Messiah? He calls him Simon, son of Jonah. So remember back with the Pharisees. The only sign that I will give you, says Jesus to the Pharisees, is the sign of the prophet Jonah. So what is that prophecy? What does the Jonah have to say to the, to the Pharisees? And, and how is Peter representing that to, um, to the other disciples and to Jesus as a witness? Well, Jonah is the story of a man named Jonah who was called by God to preach to the city of Nineveh which was the capital of Assyria. And the Assyrians were notoriously evil, wicked people. And Jonah didn't want to preach to the Ninevites because he was afraid God would forgive them, and he wanted them punished, not forgiven. And so he didn't want to, so he runs away from that call. And uh, to run away from the call, he gets into a boat, and there's a great storm. Again, that storm ties together those two storms that were there. And so the storm comes, and the the, uh, the sailors uh, find out that Jonah is the result of the storm, uh, and so they throw him overboard, and then Jonah gets swallowed up by this great fish. Uh, and he's in the belly of the fish for three days, and then the fish pukes him up on the shore of Nineveh, where he does pre preach to the Ninevites, and they do repent, and God does forgive. His worst fears have been realized. But see how God has brought into the fold these horrible people called the Assyrians through their capital of Nineveh, and God has called a prophet to bring them in, uh, who is Jewish, who has now brought them into the fold of God's redeemed people. That's what uh, Jesus is telling the Pharisees. We need to bring in all of these people that you call Gentiles, that you want to separate ourselves from. And Peter knows this, that I am the Messiah, and he, therefore, being the Messiah, I can bring in all people to myself. Jesus is constantly breaking down barriers that separate us. I was thinking how important that is for us today. We have so many barriers that separate us as a people, as a world, uh, barriers of race, barriers of gender, um, 
barriers of sexual orientation. All these are great barriers that we lift up and try to separate, build walls between us because of them. But God breaks all those walls down. God wants us to be the one who proclaims his goodness and mercy to all people and that there are no barriers that separate us. And therefore, he is the Messiah. He is Savior. He is Lord of all. And he's the one who, if we uh, simply come to him, he will show us how to truly love one another and to care for one another and that he will be the Messiah of all people. Not just a few, but all people. May God bless us with that understanding. Amen. of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Heavenly and gracious Lord, we thank you for the world in which we live. We thank you for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord and the word in which he taught his disciples. Your church was built upon the rock of Peter to spread your word of love, peace, and justice. And we as your children strive to live, in our, to live our lives according to your word. The rock of your church is led by Bishop Elizabeth, Bishop Andy, Pastor Rick, the church council, the call committee, and the person you are preparing to lead St. Peter's. Watch over them and give them our love and support as they work in this time of COVID. Lord, in your mercy. In these uncertain times, we begin another school year. We pray for your watchful embrace over students as they learn from home or from school. We pray for administrators and parents as they constantly adjust to changing guidelines and schedules. Teachers give so much and have a special calling. Watch over them. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Since the outbreak began, outbreak began, over 900 frontline doctors, nurses, and EMTs have been stricken by COVID. We continue to mourn their losses along with their family members. As fires are ravaging California and other areas in the West, and tropical storms and hurricanes are threatening coastal zones, we pray for the safety of firefighters, EMTs, and police officers as they battle fires and rescue others. Lord, in your mercy. Watch over our members, family members, and friends who are sick or hurting. Watch over your children that are in care facilities. We pray for those that are facing long-term illnesses and give them hope and courage in this time of trial. 
We pray for scientists as they work to find a cure to end this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many of our fellow citizens have lost their jobs, been given reduced hours, food banks, lines are increasing, and many do not know where their next meal is coming from. In this time of fear and confusion, protect them, show them your love, and open our hearts to help in any way possible. We pray for those suffering from addictions and those trapped in homes with their oppressors. Watch over them and give them safe harbor. Lord, in your mercy. We gather together today to film this service in your house, but your house has many rooms. We give you thanks and praise for the homes that we have to share this service online. We praise and give thanks for all that work to film and edit the service. Our coffee hour is an important function of St. Peter's and we miss our gathering. We praise our Zoom fellowships as we continue to learn more about our brothers and sisters in Christ. We long to be, get, we long to be together again, but we are grateful for our families and friends, our homes, our jobs, the food on our tables, and this beautiful part of your glorious world, San Diego and Sunset Cliffs, that we call home. We thank you for all of our blessings, but now we silently lift those cares and concerns that we hold in our hearts and into your loving arms. Father, listen to your children sing your praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share that peace of Christ with those with you in your homes today. And if you're by yourself, know that Christ's peace rests within you. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish, nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name. Holy God, maker, redeemer, and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars, were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal. As grain scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Jesus taught his disciples this prayer. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save, Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please take your bread, break it, and hold it up. With these words, bless it. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken. Please raise your cup of wine or juice and bless it with these words. The blood of Christ spilled for you. The blood of Christ spilled for you. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal you have feasted upon your goodness and we've been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Please bow your hearts to receive the blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Our sending song is, Take my life that I may be. Peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.